Hello, my dear friends. I'm here in my Thursday in which I stay at home just to do things that are necessary so I can like uh, keep up with the questions of the groups and also with my classes. And I was just uh, seeing this case here. It's a bimaxillary protrusion, as you can see. And this guy was being treated without extraction because I know many people think that they don't need to do extraction never ever in their lives but i tell them you are wrong because there are some cases in which you can't solve the puzzle if you don't extract so this guy was under treatment for four years it's it's interesting i think four years is the maximum time patients keep in treatment under treatment without questioning themselves is there something wrong or because it's not changing of course it will not change because you can't solve this problem, you can't distalize these teeth if you do not extract. You can try to do extraction uh, in another fashion, not the first premolars, as I prefer to do in many cases because of the line of action of the force, but at least you need to extract the third molars. So if you do not do that, if you do not do the extraction, if you're not uh, you're trying to do that without extracting, you're going to proclinate, to procline upper teeth uh, and lower teeth further. And you see here we have a huge proclination of upper and lower teeth that is not really helping me uh, with any mechanics uh, other than retracting. So how can I retract cases like this? And in my case, what I tried to do was, oh, I told the patient and his mother first day, we need to extract. You can choose by, between extraction of the third molars, and then we need to insert four mini implants, extra alveolar mini implants, and distalize. For this type of mechanics, I would use the distalization of uh, upper and lower after, right after extraction, because I will benefit uh, from the uh, rep, rep the maxillary, uh, rep acceleratory phenomenon, I'm sorry. You know, this song here just for calming my mind down. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, let's try to stop this song. Alexa, party. So let's do it. <laughs> Look, uh, we have here the necessity, the need for extracting first premolars or the third molars. Patient asked me, my, his mother asked me, but look, he's, uh, he's semi-professional football player and uh, do you think this mini implants will uh, be difficult for him to play i couldn't really tell her because i, I haven't uh, I, I don't know used that before with patients that need to play professionally so this is something that i couldn't assure to them that uh, they will uh, the, the mini implants i mean will would not harm him during sport. So we opt for doing extraction of four premolars. So that we did. Uh, we see here that uh, first step is leveling, completely leveling and aligning teeth. And when I reach the rectangular arch wire, I usually use the for this, for starting retraction, 1925 or 2125, as you know. But look, uh, because of the extreme inclination of upper anterior and lower teeth i needed to do that since they won with torque i mean i'm not really applying the torque for changing the inclination you already know that if not if you are not aware of that please go back to here in my classes and you're going to see why because what you you don't want here is to change the inclination at this point why not because if you do that with the center of rotation in the center of the crown and it's going to happen this way. I extensively explained this before. So you're going to do the proclination of the roots. You do not want that at all. Please never do that. Otherwise you're going to throw the root against, against the cortical plate and it's going to be very bad for your patient and for the roots, of course. So first of all, I need to apply the right torque. You see that I have here in anterior segment, conventional brackets, and in posterior segment, I have, I have self-ligating self brackets. Why? There's a reason for that. Uh, because of the shape of the self-ligating brackets, uh, they don't have even walls in the upper and lower walls of the slot. So sometimes when we apply the torque, we don't reach we don't reach the right 
uh, magnitude of the couple that we need. So I prefer to use, in this case, the, sec the anterior segment conventional brackets. In the posterior segment, because I want to slide in, I use the self-ligating, and also I grind the wire in posterior segment. So I did that and then began this type of retraction. And look at this mechanics now. This is what I want to call your attention about. Look, there is more retraction in the upper arch than in the lower arch. And we still have the class two here. So what I did now, I am dealing with the torque, controlling the torque in the anterior segment. And because I'm gonna go, I'm, I'm gonna show to you in a few slides, because I have I have reached the retraction that I want to the anterior segment, we don't really need that magnitude of retraction that we think we need because a, a little bit of retraction will immediately change the position of the lips. And I'm gonna show to you how it works in my mind. You see, we have now more up, upright anterior teeth, upper and lower, but we still have, look, a class two in the premolar. So what I want now is to lose anchorage, and I'm using the class two elastic for this, and I'm applying active torque, both in upper and lower, meaning I'm applying buckle crown torque. Why is that? Why? It's not going to change. What I want now is to lose, lose anchorage. Why? Because I think I reached the right position of the incisor to uh, benefit his profile, both his profile and also his smile. I'm gonna show to you. So what I want here is to increase anchorage in anterior segment by means of the torque and lose anchorage in posterior segment by means of direct, direct force, both in the upper and lower arches. And also I want to lose more inclined, I want to lo lose more anchorage in the lower. So I also use a class two elastics. So, you know, everything is based on diagnosis, on solid diagnosis and biomechanics but you usually uh, think about bimaxillary protrusion as full retraction. It is not like that. It is not like that. Why? Because if you do that, think about it, you don't have eight millimeters distal to the root of the lower incisor to do this type of retraction, nor in the upper incisor. So you can't do that in most of the cases and pay attention to your patient's profile. So let's move on. What I want to do now is this. I want to lose, I guess, retract, but at some point I want to lose anchorage. And that's why I use this type of mechanics. Losing anchorage, retracting a little bit, but at some point I want to fix everything in a class one uh, relationship and also lose anchorage. That's why I did it this way. And then this way we retract like this. So. Remember, to solve a, pu a puzzle like this, you can't retract eight millimeters. Let let's take a look here. You don't have enough room to do that. You don't have enough bone distal to the roots of the lower incisor to retract eight millimeters, which is the size of the premolar in average, I mean. So what do we do? We lose inclination with the center of rotation close to the apex, okay? And we don't retract the apex in these cases. Also in the upper arch, the same thing. We have a little bit more of bone available here, but not that much, not eight millimeters. So take care when you do the retraction. What I mean is sometimes we need to, in cases like this, in bimaxillary protrusion, in even cases like that, we need to lose inclination, lose anchorage. So don't miss this point what we need to look after. We need to look after changing the patient profile. So you see here in the beginning of the process and then after retracting, we see we have a good, a good profile now. Why should I go further with the retraction if it changed very well his profile? Of course, he needs a little bit more of Pogonian and I told her mother he had also this Pogonian deficiency in the beginning of the treatment because of the diagnosis, of course. And then I told her that probably in the end of the treatment, the end of the treatment, we would need, if, if they wanted, of course, we would need a, a Pogonian advancement. 
And she told me, okay, this is good, no problem. We can do that in the end, but not now. Let's see what's going on. And I, I doubt, I really doubt they're going to do that. But this is something that I proposed in the beginning of the process. And we have here the pre and the trans treatment. I, I'm not uh, ready with this treatment. I haven't finished it yet, but uh, I just wanted to show to you that in some cases we need to extract because some people think, why not? By extracting, we have tongue impingement, we have breathing issues, come on. This is a bimaxillary protrusion. It doesn't need to be because of the tongue. The tongue is not the etiology of this problem. This is like a, a, a tooth uh, arch length, tooth size discrepancy. Yes, that's it. And in this case, it is not crowding, but it's proclination. So we're solving the problem to put everything to like match the, the arch length with the tooth, the teeth mass. So that's it. We need to do extraction. And look at that. Because of the parallax effect, we see that the inclination of upper anterior teeth is not allowing us to see the teeth properly, I mean. We see this inclination. Look at that. I'm going to show something to you. Look at my iPhone here. When I do this, uh, I have completely view of my iPhone. If I do that, you don't see the same magnitude. And if you go more, more and more and more, you're going to see less and less. That same, same thing is going to happen when you have this huge inclination of upper and lower anterior teeth. So look at the inclination that we see now. We are in the finishing stages of the treatment, so we still need to go on with the retraction. Know how long this guy is under treatment? Uh, maximum, maximum six months maximum six months and we are going to finish this case in less than uh, one year 10 months 11 months is what i think we're going to have in this case so compare before and after how come you think this is good for him it's not good for his smile at all this inclination of teeth is not not going to be good for him and it's not allowing him to close the lip passively so this is something that you're uh, this is pa this patient is not going to improve with time he's going to be at all time aging with this uh, active lip sealing and with this bad smile so why not extract why not extract tell me that please and give me really scientific ground for not doing that it's because if you're telling me that because of orthotrophic and blah 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 please don't even tell don't even try i I'm, i've been there before i I've, i studied everything that i could about this and this is really really well i'm not saying what it is but you know what it is so look at that you have here the inclination controlled and you have now a patient that's completely satisfied with this so we are finishing now with the retraction or oh, i'm sorry we're losing inclination losing anchorage both in the upper and lower but mainly in the lower arch okay with a little bit of retraction because it's impossible not to retract a little bit even with the torque the active torque that i applied here and look this active torque is much more efficient in this type of bracket conventional bracket Okay, so this is what I'm doing here. And uh, if you compare before and after, you see that the inclination is really now much, much better. That's it. So in our Thursdays, from time to time, from my home here, I'm gonna go on with this. Alexa, volte a tocar. I will, oh, Alexa lost my song. <laughs> I'll come back, I'll come back on next day, next Thursday, I think. Bye-bye.